So today we're going to look at a few things about Zoom layout preferences and just trying to make sure things are where you want them to be. Sometimes when you're in the midst of a lesson and you're having to look at that waiting room, you got your participants, some of you are relying on chat as a resource during class, you're trying to share screen, you're also trying to make sure everybody has their camera on and your small monitor uh, gets a little bit cramped. So we're going to look at some options within Zoom to make things a little bit more comfortable. All right, so home, um, I can click on that cog right there and get to my settings. I don't have to be in a meeting to get to the client base settings, just a quick little reference point. So I've turned off my camera for this one today. You can see it, I just turned it off right there. No avatar, so it's a little less confusing. As you know, if I tick on that uh, participants on the bottom right, this will pop up. I'm gonna drag that over there so you can have a look at that. Participants on the right, my video is on the left. I can click on chat over here. And um, what you notice there is if you don't see things, just click on that more and the other functions are there. So open up chat, chat on the bottom, participants on the top. If you click on that little down carrot right there, I can pop that participant window out. I'm gonna drag it over right here. And I can place that anywhere I want so it doesn't necessarily move with my conference video of uh, screen sharing and participants and all that. I can move that someplace else. Now that's important in terms of who's coming in with that waiting room, who has their camera off. I can see all of that there. I can pop my chat out as well if you use that and I can put that someplace in my configuration. Now if I want this to go back into a unified window, all I have to do is click on the three dots and find the little bit that says merge to meeting window. That'll pop back on the bottom because that's where chat goes and I can do the same with that more on my participants and that goes back to the top. Nice. Don't forget when that's scrunched up I can click on the three dots and my breakouts and all the other stuff is there as well. Now another issue we have is when we start looking to share our screen because once that pops up things get a little crazy. If you go back to your main window with your cog, go to your settings, click on the screen share, make sure you do not have ticked the one at the top that says enter full screen when participants share screen. It's what you don't want. You want that screen to pop up and see what's there, but you don't want to lose focus of everybody else. There's some other things you can play with, but that's the big one, right? Now, when you do go to share a screen, don't forget the shortcut. On our Macs, it's uh, Command Shift, which is that arrow S, which will save you from having to click on share a screen business. So Command Shift S. I'm gonna share something super quick. I'm gonna want that interface to pop up and I'll show you a couple things which you can play with and maybe make the share screen process a little more comfortable. So I'm gonna share this doc right here. You'll notice I have the stuff at the top where it always is, right? Um, but you might not have noticed, if I click on the three dots over there, I have all my standard breakout, invite somebody else, all the stuff I need is still there. It's just move to the top. If that's foreign, which it probably is it now, I can still choose to put that at the bottom. There's a little arrow there on the left. If I click on that, it moves my controls to the bottom. I'll drag this up real quick so you can see it. And I can click on that arrow again if I want, and I can make that go back to the top. My more stuff is still there, right? And if I click on that little arrow coming up right here, it goes back to the top. Now when you're in your meeting and you have your participants, there's some things you can do to make this a little more comfortable as well. So what I've done in this situation, I'm in here with two other participants. They all look quite familiar because I'm, I gotta be on three devices. And what you have here, I have my standard configuration where I'm side by side, everything is connected, but I can make this small. Like for example, if I have notes on the right, and I'm not going to share those. I can make my zoom small. You can see what it does with my participant window. Now if I decide to pop some stuff out, which I will right now, I'm going to get my participants over there on the right. Now I can just only have my participant window open and based on how I drag and move this, it kind of changes how things look as well. Got all my tools at the bottom. Don't need that. Now what I'm going to do right here is just going to drag this uh, to the top. 
I might prefer that view. Don't forget I have my gallery view and my speaker view. Gallery view is when you can see everybody equally. Speaker view is going to pan essentially the person who's talking. So that character just spoke, therefore their window pops up. I like to be in with my kids gallery view because I want to see as many of them simultaneously as I can. Now I've dragged it to the top. I could probably, if there's eight people in here, I could see them very small across the top if I need to have my notes or my documentation at the bottom. And I can move this anywhere I want and depending on what I'm doing, it can be more comfortable that way. So maybe chat's uh, an important aspect of your class and at times with that small screen, it gets pushed on the side. If you need to, you can go to your settings on the cog if you click on the accessibility at the bottom you'll see that business it says chat and you can change the font size i've changed to 200 here i'll go back to chat type something big and now it does make it much easier for you to read in terms of being a little bit more attention calling that sort of thing now the remaining of this will cover dual monitors uh, I love to use a secondary monitor with Zoom. What I like to do is I will push my participants and my chat and the actual participant uh, window over into my secondary monitor and therefore I keep my computer uh, for communication. That's generally the camera I'll be running and for checking on my notes and documentation, just the standard controls in Zoom. So if you think you're gonna use that secondary monitor, if you've done it, you might have realized there's a bit of strangeness there. So you want to go to your settings and zoom, click on that cog and at the top under general, tick on that use dual monitor. Now on your Mac, the important function which you'll want to use is coming up here. You can use the following shortcut. It's command spacebar. It's just your finder. So hit command spacebar, type displays. Open that one up. This first window depends on which one pops up. They work together. This one over here in the back, you don't need. I'll just get that out of the way. Tick on that and click on Arrangement. It needs to look like that. Now you can decide if you drag to the left or to the right, but you don't want mirrored. And so what that means is uh, your primary computer will be that one in the center and you'll drag your stuff to the secondary computer on the right. Now at this point in time, I'm going to turn this around. I'll show you my monitor, my computer, and you can see how it looks when I pop the chat out, the participant out, and how that looks in conjunction with my computer and the secondary monitor. Two. Now, uh, what you see on my Mac Air right here, hooked up to my uh, not very fancy at all secondary monitor. You'll see there is a video on the secondary monitor which replicates this. This is why we ticked on that dual monitor bit and functions. If I have, I think I can shove roughly 35 people over here. Um, if I make that big, it's big. Um, if I compact this with 35 people on it, uh, I can literally see everybody at the same time over here. And I don't have to worry about what's going on in my computer on this side. It, this will not affect. If I can make my window of zoom on my computer here, uh, particularly small, I can make this particularly large over here and there's no correlation between the two. Now back in my main zoom controls, which are on my Mac right here, I will tick on my participants. That'll automatically pop up over there because I've already popped it up, popped it out, and I've dragged it over. And if you haven't done this before with the positioning, Mine's right positioning, so you can see it here. I click, I hold, and I drag it, and I take it over here, and this is where I want it to go. I will click on my chat. It's gonna pop up over there. Don't forget I got my huge 200% um, font popped up over there, and I've pulled it more to the left so I can see continuous chat going on as well. So those two very important functions are always there. I know where to find them. If I can't see my Zoom over here because I'm in some sort of a Google Doc or my Gmail or whatnot, I have all of my media components in terms of my class over here on the right. Um, it could get a little weird at times with my camera here and I'm looking at my students over there, but I can just reposition this and as far as they're concerned, I'm not too strange looking in terms of where my eyes are fixed in terms of looking at them and what they're seeing. It's a very comfortable setup. Um, it removes some key components of my Zoom out of the way and it leaves my computer for my controls for Zoom 
and it leaves it for my anything else I need to look at, which I'm not sharing with the kids. So comfortable and easy. All right, so hopefully some of that there will allow you to be a little more comfortable in terms of the space. Zoom, chat, waiting room, all that stuff, and maintain a certain level of sanity with all those documents in your small space. So if you need any help with that, as always, just send me an email, um, call me on Zoom, that sort of thing. I'll be happy to help you out.